Beach FM, locals talking to locals. Teresa Nagobi is our um, Labour candidate for Otaki, and we welcome her to our programme this morning. Kia ora, Teresa. Hello, Sir Nigel. Welcome to our programme. Now, I was just thinking, why would you want to get into uh, into politics, Teresa? <laughs> I guess for me, um, it's always been part of my uh, upbringing. My dad's a um, strong unionist. Um, and has always been involved in the Labour Party. Um, my mum's Pacifica, so she's Samoan um, Chinese, and I guess service um, and community service in, in particular has always been really important to her. So I've kind of grown up with it in, in my blood, I guess. Yeah, it sounds um, a bit like it. Yeah. <laughs> so you've been in the Levin Otaki area for the for your whole life, by the sounds of it, have you? Yeah. Yep, born and raised local. Good, so you understand the needs of the community. That's really the most important thing, isn't it? Mm. And it really is. And I'm lucky enough to be able to work within the community, not just in a professional sense, but also um, a lot of community volunteer work um, that I'm privileged to to work along other side, um, awesome community leaders um, right. within our whole electorate. So yes. Great. So to be selected for this position, I should imagine there are one or two other people who are nominated for it. This must be quite an accolade for you. Um, yeah, again, I'm really honoured. Um, and you're right, there were some amazing um, people that also wanted to do great work for our for our Taki Electric and our community. Um, so yeah, it is, it is a big privilege, but it also comes with a lot of responsibility. So, um, And I'm really aware of that. So... You know, yeah, I just want to make sure that we can do the best we can to get our voice, our, our Otaki Electric voice, um, to, you know, the decision-making table. Absolutely. Well, now think back, I used to speak to Darren Hughes a lot on a Monday yeah. morning here when he was the Labour candidate, and he was a very successful Labour candidate too. Yeah. So you've got to try and step up and fill his shoes where he left behind some stage. Uh, Teresa, so how are you going to do that? Oh, well, well, I don't know if I'll be able to fill Darren's shoes. I went to school with Darren, um and church, so I know Darren really well, and he's here, yeah, he's, and it was an exceptional um, politician, awesome uh, rep, for, uh, rep for the Labour Party, so I don't, and also he's a male, <laughs> and I'm a woman, so I think my, my journey will be a little bit different, um, and also I have, you know, I think for me, I have, um, like you said, the knowledge of uh, what our community, but our community is not dissimilar to others, so especially around the Pacifica community, Māori community, um, you know, people with children, um, being a woman myself. I've also worked um, in government as a public servant now for oh, well over 15 years, So, and in various roles, um, and I guess they all lead back to that social justice uh, focus for me. So um, I guess that's what I, how I'm going to try and do it, I guess, just being real and um, making sure... Uh, we make sure our community know the benefit of what I believe this government is uh, able to bring for our people. And it represents so many diverse communities within our electorate that, yeah, for me, um, you know, those policies, I believe, are going to benefit and um, and help us uh, going through with our, you know, whether it's your children, Māori and Iwi, uh, Pacifica, um, you know, the living wage, um, pushing towards that, you know, uh, and some of the, the policies I've already been able to bring to us in terms of the family package that helps so many, you know, free um, education in schools. Oh, I've gone on forever. I think um, they're doing an amazing job. And I, you just have to see how the Prime Minister's already handling um, COVID, never mind about the other, you know, White Island and, and unfortunately the Christchurch shootings. But you look at how she ha- she's handling COVID as well. On an international stage, it's amazing. Um, so those strong, steady hands, I believe, are going to be able to help us recover really well and, and, and pull us out in a, in a really positive way um, through COVID. Mm. Of course, we need a strong voice here in the Otaki electorate because we're such a booming sort of a, a place at mm. the moment, and let's hope it will continue on after this uh, virus. But um, we've got to have a strong voice in Parliament to get things like rail systems going and yeah. upgrading our roads, etc. And I should imagine, uh, what do you think about the four-lane upgrade from uh, State Highway 1 from Otaki to Levin? That's a vital part of it because Labour at one stage were going to cut it down to two lanes, but I think the pressure's been put on to make it a four-lane. Are you in favour of a four-lane road? 
I think the point is, um, and like I said, I've worked in a government for many, many years, so I take that rail, um, and we don't have the electrification at the moment, obviously, only up to, to Waikanae. So, yeah, I see, you know, actually see the need. And also, you know, um, with the roads, so there's been times when I've had to travel it instead of now to take the train. So I, I guess for me, the important thing to remember is that Labour has um, committed to that four-lane highway, which was amazing. Yes. Um, and that was the first, you know, I know that other parties have said, you know, that they took it off, took it off. No, they've committed. They, they the only party that have come out and committed to a four-lane highway. So, yeah, I think um, whatever that looks like um, after COVID is going to be, yeah, awesome for our electorate. I should imagine with this COVID, we're going to have more problems in our mental health. So you're fairly strong in making sure we get some support for our GPs mm. in this side of the health mm. uh, portfolio too. Yeah, you're right. And they've already put, even prior to COVID, the government had put extra funding in, in terms of being able to have health professionals in all parts of that um, kind of mental health and disability process. Again, mental health and disability is also a big part of my background and um, a passion. And um, you know, you know, I, I believe I'm a really good voice to push for advocacy and making sure we have um, access to that health, uh, those health um, professionals and that health support. So, um, during, even during COVID, I know that uh, the party have been really vocal in making sure people are aware of the mental health. Um, services and facilities, especially during COVID, and I'm sure that will continue coming out of the, of the lockdown. Of course, you're a mother of what three children? What yes. age are they, yes. Teresa? So they're all boys. Oh gosh! And, yeah. <laughs> so they're nine, eight, and four, and my nine-year-old is about to turn ten. Right. So you could handle yes. uh, parliamentary work as well as looking after the family. <laughs> I, I believe so, um, and that's why I'm doing it. Really, is for my family. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I want my boys to be able to have the same um, equal access to um, life, I guess, but, uh, you know, uh, facilities and health system and, um, and the same opportunities um, as everyone else. So I believe Labor is the only um, party that's going to be able to do that for my family and for others that are, that are like us. So, right. yeah. Now, you're a local case manager for Work and Income Levin, so you are seeing uh, that side of life which is in desperate need of help mm. at all times. I'm not just saying through this virus part, but yeah. at all times we need a lot of uh, help in that area, and you'd see everybody who's in that need coming in to see you. Yeah, we do. Um, and the team there throughout New Zealand, <clears throat> excuse me, do an amazing job. Um, it's it, it, it is hard. You're hearing the price of a lot of people, and like you said, it's even prior to COVID. So, um, yeah, it's it's been really tough for a lot of people out there. Um, and I guess, again, um, you know, while um, you know we can always be doing more, uh, I believe Labor have done a great job even going in <coughs> into COVID. We'd already, you know, had low rates of um, unemployment. Um, you know, we'd already. Uh, had some plans around the benefit, um, you know, abatement uh, rates and things like that. And so now what they've done is been able to double a lot of that. They brought in the winter energy payments last year for our kaumatua, for our older people and our people who are whānau in need. And now they've doubled that just so that people can get through winter, but also with COVID in mind and knowing that this is going to be a a lot tougher time. Um, So, yeah, we do see the need and it's massive. Absolutely. And um, finally, we'll be, we will be speaking to you nearer the time, of course, of the election, like we do with all the candidates. But uh, what is your vision for the Otaki electorate? Uh, just uh, something outside of the normal routine. Have you got anything special there? Um, for the Otaki electorate, my hope is that we can take that really diverse um, voice to Parliament, that we take all the awesome stuff that, and all the awesome communities and we'll be able to take all of that to Parliament. We're not far from Wellington. You know, like you said, we've got some really awesome um, businesses and initiatives right throughout our coast, right throughout the electorate, and I want to make sure that Parliament, but all of New Zealand see that, and all of New Zealand see the awesome um, initiatives and happenings going on within all those different community groups that make up our awesome, diverse uh, Otaki community. Teresa, we thank you for your time this morning. The reason I got you on today is just to let people know who you are and uh, we've got to start and think about this election because there's not going to be much time to have 
uh, party politics out in um, the community from now through to September, I should imagine. So this is just to introduce you and uh, nice to hear from you too. Yeah, you too. Thanks very much, Nigel, That's and thanks to all your listeners. It's a pleasure. Teresa Nagobi. 106.3 BGFM.